Hey, what's going on guys? Patrick here. Wanted to do a video and explain why it's hard for me to purchase a $400 helmet. Let's get into it. Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. As I alluded to, I want to discuss helmets in this video and in particular, why it is difficult for me to purchase a four or $500 helmet. Now, I'm not a helmet guru. I'm just giving you my perspective on the situation. And I want to start off uh, this particular episode with the story. So I was recently participating in a group ride. It was about 15 guys and we were having a great time riding through the city of ATL. And we came around this one corner and one of the guys fell off of the board. He kind of tumbled and he fell. And of course, we all rushed over to make sure that he was safe and he was able to get up and stand on his own. And the only damage he had was he had kind of tore his pants and he was, his knee was a little bloody. And I think his elbow and his hands were just a little bloody. And we all were like, man, we're glad you're okay because it was a pretty nasty looking fall. He actually did some tumbles. So we continued to ride and we went to our destination to get something to eat. And this is when the night kind of changed. And while we were sitting in this restaurant getting some pizza, he was able to notice that he had actually hit his head on the ground when he fell because his helmet had some marks and scratches. And you see, he was so upset the rest of the night that he had scratched his helmet because he had one of those four to $500 helmets. And I share this story because it emphasizes the very first point that I want to make in this video, which is that a helmet's primary responsibility and job is simply to protect your head and your face if you were to fall. Um, and to protect you from a sustaining serious injury. And I think sometimes people don't consider that or they get lost in the shuffle of the primary role of a helmet because they look at, oh, this helmet is so cool looking. I paid four or $500 for it. I'm going to look so cool when I'm rolling that they forget that, listen, a helmet's primary purpose is really to protect your head. And that night, uh, the guy that had failed, he was so upset, not that he had fallen, not that he had skinned up his knee, not that he had hurt his elbow, but he was mad that he had hit his four to $500 helmet on the ground. And I had to tell him some perspective. Let's put things in perspective. I said, the helmet did exactly what it was supposed to do. And I said, what if you didn't have a helmet on and you hit your head on the ground? It wouldn't just be those small scratches on your helmet. So that's the very first point that I want to kind of emphasize and point out, which is that the helmet's primary role, no matter how expensive it is, no matter how cool it looks, is really just to protect your head. And this leads me to my second point which is the fact that when you're looking at helmets, uh, most helmets, if, if they're of any quality, will have different certifications. And now I'm not a helmet guru. I'm going to talk a little bit about them. And what you'll notice is that some helmets will have DOT, ECE, and SNAIL certifications. And based on your geographic region, uh, it may dictate the type of certification that you have. Like in America, it's DOT. In, in Europe, it might be ECE, so on and so forth. But the fact of the matter is you want to purchase a helmet that is certified and the helmets can also be dual certified so it can be DOT and ECE certified or SNEL certified and I share this to say this you have individuals buying four or five hundred dollar helmets for a helmet that's DOT certified when there's a helmet that you can buy at the fraction of the cost with the exact same certification and while there may be some differences in the material of the helmet oh this helmet is carbon fiber is lighter than this helmet here so on and so forth the fact remains that if you're trying to get a helmet, you want to make sure it's certified, you may be able to get a helmet that is certified for a fraction of the cost that will provide pretty, uh, that will provide similarly the same type of protection as a four to $500 helmet. So that's the other point that I wanted to make where it's really about is this helmet certified or not? Because that should be the primary determinant of whether you purchase a helmet and not how cool it looks, um, not what materials it's made out of, and so on and so forth. You want to get you a helmet that's certified and sometimes you can get a helmet that is certified and meets those specifications for a fraction of the cost. The next thing that I want to kind of talk about, which really is a, a, a really important part when you talk about why it's difficult for me to maybe go out and buy a four or $500 helmet. And some people know this and some people don't. Um, and I learned this when I used to ride motorcycles. And I learned that a helmet is actually a one-time drop device. And what that means is that, technically speaking, a helmet is only designed to take an impact one time. And what that means is that if you were to drop your helmet, and this happened to me when I used to ride motorcycles, if you dropped your helmet hard enough, technically speaking, you're supposed to buy a new helmet because 
the helmet took that impact and it's not going to protect your head in a, in a second impact as well as it would have had it not had that very first impact. I hope that makes sense. And the same thing kind of applies to these helmets when you talk about e-skating and things like that, which is that these helmets are one-time um, hit devices, which means that if you were to drop your helmet hard on the ground on an accident, you were putting it on or you sat it on the table and it fell on the ground, which I've seen lots of people do, you are technically supposed to buy a whole nother helmet if you're following the rules um, and the standards that, that are set out by the helmet. So what that means is that if you go out and you buy a four or $500 helmet, and let's say you just drop it on the ground, technically speaking, you're supposed to replace that helmet. And some helmet companies have this thing where they'll say, hey, you can buy the warranty that if you were to drop this helmet, then you can get a replacement helmet for half of the price. So that means that if you go out and you buy a $450 helmet, $400 helmet, and you drop it, or you fall on it, or whatever the case may be, and you damage it, and you need to replace it, oftentimes they'll have you pay something like maybe half of what you pay for the helmet to get a replacement helmet. So that means that if you went out and bought a $400 helmet, and you have to pay $200 to get a new one issued to you, that means you now spent $600 on the helmet, which you could have maybe avoided if you had just got a helmet at a fraction of the cost, maybe 100 bucks or maybe even less. So if you were to drop it and you need to replace it, you're still going to come out paying less for that helmet than if you had bought that four to five or six hundred dollar helmet. The final point I want to discuss, um, which is something that we regularly discuss when we talk about helmets, is many people often buy these expensive helmets because they're made out of these fancy materials, carbon fiber, so on and so forth. And they be like, oh, this makes my helmet incredibly light. Like my helmet is so light, I just love it. And while that may be great that it's made out of that material, one of the things that really fascinates me about that is I think that there's only a, a very few amount of e-skaters that actually really benefit from having a helmet that is made of carbon fiber. And you see, that might be individuals who are, who are racers or doing racing or you, you bomb hills and you're timing how fast you get down the hill or you're participating in races where every millisecond, every... Um, ounce matters when you talk about weight and being aerodynamic and so on and so forth. But I think that for the vast majority of e-skate riders, that's just not the case. Um, most guys, e-skate riders, are riding in groups through the city, just cruising around, having a good time, or most people are just commuting on their boards. And whether or not your helmet is 10 ounces lighter than another helmet or more aerodynamic, I don't think that that's a factor that really plays into whether or not that helmet should be worth paying that much more because it's made out of this special material or whatever the case may be. Another argument that I hear people say is, well, I don't like a, a heavy helmet on my neck. And I'm like, well, I can, I can kind of understand that, but no matter the helmet, I mean, is it really that heavy? I mean, I used to ride a motorcycle, so a helmet, no matter the weight, really doesn't bother me. But the other thing is, in most situations, most e-skate riders maybe don't ride more than, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 minutes at a time before taking a break, maybe. Um, in most scenarios, yes, you have some extreme people that may ride for an hour straight or hour and a half or whatever the case may be. But most e-skaters, I would say, when I ride in groups with guys, we might ride for 30 minutes, take a break because we have to charge up. So you took the helmet off. So is the helmet really that heavy? Are you really getting a lot out of a helmet because it's a couple of ounces lighter and it looks cooler and it's more aerodynamic. Is it really worth four or $500? And you know, me personally, my opinion, I don't know if it's worth that much uh, to pay that much for a helmet to get some of those features that I just think that are more gimmicky than, well, I should say more gimmicky for the average user um, than are helpful. You know, you're going to have those select few people that are extreme extremists where they're bombing hills, they participate in competitions. And yes, ounces will matter. Being more aerodynamic, it will matter. But it's crazy, you see guys out here, you know, heavier riders with these expensive helmets on talking about this helmet's heavy. And I'm like, I mean, are you really gonna be moving faster with it? I mean, um, we take breaks every 20, 30 minutes when we ride. Like how heavy is this helmet really on your, you know, on your neck or on your head? I just don't think that a helmet being a couple ounces more is gonna make it that big of a deal on your neck when you're, when you're riding for maybe 20, 30 minutes at a time. Uh, to conclude the video, um, any helmet, I'm a, I'm a helmet advocate. No matter what helmet you're wearing, I don't care if it's a four or $500 helmet or you bought a less expensive helmet, I'm just glad that you're wearing a helmet because 
the one part of your body that is, is the main component that needs to be protected is your head. Um, and you don't want to have traumatic brain injury or get an injury, the injury that costs you to not be able to live life to your fullest capacity because you got injured uh, doing a sport that you enjoy. So as always, I'll see you at the top. Please take a minute to like, subscribe, and share if you like what you heard. Peace.